Hello and welcome to this third video in this series of an introduction to Arnold for Studio Max. And today we're going to focus our attention on the system tab and see which things you can use and how they can improve your workflow and the first steps you are taking with Arnold. Now, one of the first things in particular, if you're coming from a progressive render, is the bucket scanning. And this is going to define how your image is going to be rendered. There is a couple of options, and if you're doing something like I'm doing here, um, some look development, I'm checking and tweaking the textures for this chair, you may want to use this option, the spiral. This will start in the center of your uh, image or your the region render that you have, and it will start cleaning um, as a spiral. Now, this is quite useful because usually you tend to focus your attention in the middle, uh, and it doesn't make sense, it starts cleaning from there. Along with that, you may want to change your bucket size from 64 pixels to something like 32 or even 16 like I have here. This option, along with something like progressive render and adaptive sampling, it's not going to make your render faster, but it's definitely going to help you have a faster preview. And this is quite useful and practical when you are adjusting textures, materials, like I mentioned. Then once you are happy with all the tweaks you did, if you want to render your final image, then I would advise you to get to something like Hilbert. I run a couple of tests using these options you have here. Uh, the best one is definitely Hilbert, and then the worst one is random, so try to avoid that. So get back to Hilbert, and then you may want to get back again to 64, as this is going to give you the best performance. The next thing you may find useful and you're probably going to notice that is, for example, let's say you need to uh, do some color correction to a texture that you have. If you're going to your material editor and if you're going to maps general, this is all you have available, right? Uh, and this is happening because this option called legacy 3ds max support is off. And the reason why this is so important is because max is uh, a DCC that supports Arnold. But you can also export everything you have here, meaning lights, cameras, materials, and geometry as a S file. And then you can, for example, render that file without opening Studio Max. Or you can bring that file inside Maya and render with Arnold. Or you can bring inside Udini and render with Arnold. So as long as the DCC or the application supports Arnold, you can... Uh, switch and, and have information from one application to another one because it supports that uh, as file. Now for that to happen, you need to work in the Arnold environment, right? So if something is very specific, for example, to Studio Max, or if something is very specific for Maya, it's obviously it's not going to be supported on a different DCC. So to avoid any issues and any mistakes, um, this option really removes anything that is not supported uh, by Arnold by default. Obviously, this is practical in the studio environment where you may doing an animation with Maya and you're doing some simulations with Udini and you're doing your final render with Studio Max. Uh, but sometimes you may need this option on. Um, this option, it's useful, for example, when you need to work with very specific plugins for Studio Max. So, for example, you may need to work with this uh, plugin to create a uh, complex fernal. This is really practical if you want to do met metals, um, but this is not going to appear on this list if you don't have legacy 3ds Max support on. The same principle applies to a lot of the plugins which is very specific to uh, Max. For example, the multi-texture that you can use with the floor generator, it's not going to appear if we don't have as they say here, the legacy 3ds Max support turn on. The same thing happens with Forest Pack. Uh, Forest Pack will work, uh, but there is a couple of tools like the Forest Edge and others that will not work if, again, this option is not on. So eventually, I, I would recommend initially you have this off. So for example, you need a color correction node. You're not going to use the legacy color correction node. You may want to use the OSL color, color correction node or you want to use the Arnold color correction node, as you can see here. So if you go to Arnold, and if you go to color, there you go, you have, um, you have that option. Now, with that in mind, 
it is obviously it will get to a stage where there is a specific thing that you need and then by all means use the legacy 3ds max support but initially working in an environment like this will help you to understand what is available in arnold which there is a lot by the way but what is available and how you can use it again the user guide is a, is a practical way for you to understand what is available and how you can work but also feel free to ask any questions in this video i'll try my my best to help you then um, the next thing you'll find useful is the fact that uh, Arnold has two render devices. It has the CPU, which is the one you have by default. And then if your graphics card support, you can work also with GPU. Now, uh, in terms of the GPU, there is a couple of things you need to keep in mind. Uh, first of all, uh, Arnold has been for a long time, more than 20 years, a CPU renderer. Um, so having a GPU, uh, there is a lot of work that still needs to be done. This is a work in progress. The Arnold developers are making a huge effort to make everything available. I would say almost 95% of the things you can do in CPU, you can do it in GPU. And this doesn't happen with other uh, renders in the market. There is always like a big difference between the CPU render and the GPU render. For that reason, um, one of the things you need to do if you are working with a GPU for the first time is to uh, do a pre-populated GPU cache. Now, this is something you, that will create a cache, will help to optimize and increase the performance when working with GPU. Even if you don't do this, uh, the first time you hit render with GPU, this is going to be done automatically. Uh, and you don't want to be waiting 10 to 15 minutes, depending on your graphics card, obviously. But you don't want to wait for that. So my advice is the first time you open uh, our nodes, just to the populate GPU cache in case you're going to need it. Uh, do you need to do this every single time? No. Um, like I said, if this is the first time, then yes, you'll have to do it. But then if you update our nodes, like a new version, it's a good idea to do it. And if you update your graphics card drivers, it's also a good idea to do it. So it's not something you'll have to do it every single day. Uh, but you need to, every time there's a change in the system, you need to create that GPU cache. This can be a little bit annoying sometimes uh, because it's like 10 minutes you're waiting to the finish. Um, but it's definitely something you'll see the performance increasing. Um, then I believe another thing you'll find useful is the fact that uh, GPU, I would advise you to work in a scene like this, a very simple scene. Uh, or when you're doing look development, because uh, GPU is a work in progress, right? They're doing an amazing job to make everything to look work fine, uh, but there is always issues, and GPU tends to be very sensible. So, for example, uh, one of the things you have to keep in mind is the fact that uh, this scene is quite simple. So, I guess my graphics card ha has eight um, gigabytes of memory, so everything is here could fit to the graphics card. But if you have something more complex, if you have something that it has a lot of vegetation, uh, 4K textures, 8K textures, you may need a, a massive graphics card, a beast, to, to tackle that scene. Um, so GPU has this limitation. And this happens not only with Arnold GPU, but with any GPU vendor. They always have limitations that you need to keep in mind. Now, if you find an issue, uh, one of the best things you can do, and this will help to uh, fix bugs and help the, the software to be better, is just report all the all the issues and, and things that you find. Uh, one of the best ways to do it is by going into the rendering menu, and then you have this option called render message window. Right? This is going to open this window. Now, this window is going to be your best friend because it's going to provide you with all the information that you need and uh, what's happening in your scene. As you can see, it tells you what's happening on the material editor. It tells you what's happening in the production, which is what we're using at the moment. Um, how, how does it help you? Well, for example, if I uh, scroll down, you will get everything is orange. It's like a warning. It's telling you, okay, this is not like a big issue, just for you to be aware. And like in this situation, for example, I have something connected to a cell shader that is not all a cell shader. So as they're telling, you may have a little bit of heat in terms of performance. It's less portable. Just keep that in mind. If there is like a big issue, then that message will not be a warning, but it will be a error message and it will be something like this, a red message. It's telling like, this is a problem. This is not going to happen. 
in this situation here, I, I on purpose, I connected the color output to float. And this is two different data, or data types. Um, and so they're, they're not comfortable. Right, so it's giving me information that I need to fix the issue. Um, and you may find this when you're working with GPU or CPU. If you find that, um, if something happens and, and you'll get like, like a red message, this is something you can pick. Go to Arnold Answers and say, okay, look, I'm trying to do this and this is the message that came up. Do, do I need, what can I do? How can I fix this? Obviously, like I said initially in the first video, just make sure you have the latest version because whatever you're finding probably was fixed. Um, but if not, you can report and they'll make their best to on a couple of weeks, you'll have an update just to, to fix the issue. Um, so that's everything I had to share with you in terms of this tab. Um, again, I hope you find this useful. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me or leave a comment in the video. And I'll, again, I'll try my best to answer the question or even do a video to explain how things work. So thanks for watching. And on the next video, we are going to talk about AOVs, which also you can call them render passes. And also how you can work with the light group manager to create AOVs for different lights. So again, thanks for watching.